Hey, I'm Sarah. In my last video, I demoed all of the features of my BLE scanner app from start to finish. And today I'd like to go ahead and go over the code changes that I made to make all of this happen. So I'm here on my home screen and I have all of my BLE devices listed. And what can happen is basically a BLE device can have a dynamic MAC address, so it might not always be the same. And that means that old devices could be stale on your home screen. And I wanted to find a way to delete all of those stale devices that just aren't valid anymore. And at first I thought about using Work Manager to handle all of that. So let me show you what I mocked up. Coin allows you to use the worker scope and I created a delete not seen worker and I basically inject some parameters into that and then I create my request here and the builder and the repeat interval is 15 minutes but I ended up not liking that I wanted something that ran a little bit faster so what I ended up doing is here in my BLE DAO I have a query and I say delete from scanned where the current timestamp minus the last seen date, if it's greater than 15,000 milliseconds, the custom name is null, and it's not set as a favorite, then go ahead and delete it behind the scenes. So it'll keep this homepage list nice and clean with fresh MAC addresses and fresh devices. And the way this works in my BLE manager, I have a last cleanup timestamp, and at first that's set to null, and then I have my cleanup duration, and this is how often it runs. And right now it's set to 60,000 milliseconds. And in my callback here, I process the scan result, and then in a new coroutine, I launch delete not seen. Now before I show that function, first let me show you down here. When the scan is started, the last cleanup timestamp is set to the current time in milliseconds. And now back up here in the delete not seen function, if the last cleanup timestamp is not null, then get the current time, subtract it from the last time. And if it's greater than the cleanup duration, then go ahead and delete not seen, and then set the last cleanup timestamp to now. So this runs periodically and cleans up my home screen and it works great, I like it a lot. Next, I'll go over my portrait and landscape layout modes. So on the home screen here, you can sort by RSSI, name, favorites, and forget. Let's look at this composable real quick and see how this works. So let me go here to my scan filters composable and I'll minimize this. And here you can see in the previews, I have portrait mode and landscape mode. And how this works is I have an app layout mode and if it's landscape, go ahead and show the column. Otherwise, if it's portrait, give me a row. And behind the scenes, I call my app layout utils, and I have different modes here. I have landscape normal, which is just a phone, landscape big, which is a tablet, portrait, and then portrait narrow. I like to separate portrait and portrait narrow because sometimes you have tablets, which really aren't much wider than a phone turned on its side. So I like to go ahead and single that out and adjust the padding accordingly, depending on what type of layout it is. This basically goes through and it checks to see if it's a foldable. I'm really not doing anything with foldable right now. Uh, otherwise, it gets the phone in landscape mode or it gets the layout type. And I use window size class, but I actually like to override some of the defaults. So here I'm checking the actual size. And depending on the size, I say this is portrait narrow, this is landscape normal. And I basically just go through and set up my mode accordingly. Continuing on with the filter functionality, let me show you how that works behind the scenes. In my BLE repository, first I need to establish a base RSSI. And this is because the RSSI is constantly changing. And if I wanted to sort by that, it would be crazy. The user would see constant new devices flashing up and down the list, and they wouldn't be able to use it properly. So here, when I insert the device, I establish a base RSSI. If, it's, if we don't have a base RSSI, it sets it to the current. And then I have a threshold here of 20. So if it's between, so if the new RSSI coming in is between this threshold, then it uses the base. Otherwise, we establish a new base. So let's say that I'm walking towards a device. 
the base RSSI is gradually going to increase as the RSSI gets stronger. So that's the first thing I needed to do to make the sorting work. And then finally, in the actual get scan devices, it can take a scan filter option. And I have the different options here, RSSI, name, favorites, and forget. And if it's null, then it just returns the list as it comes from room. Otherwise, it's going to go through these different sorting parameters. So here I filter by the base RSSI here. And here I filter by the name, and it goes through a couple checks. And then here's the favorites, where the favorite is true, and forget where forget is true. And this is how it works in the BLE. Now in the view model, I have a scan filter option, which comes in as a flow. And then I also have my devices, which is coming from my room database backend. So whenever the scan filter option changes, I want to call my repository and get the scan devices based on that filter. And then I call a map here and send it out as a pair. And then when I create my state, then I simply just add the scan filter option and the devices to my state in my view model. I've made some additional changes to my view model too. Here you can see I have BLE connect events, BLE read write commands, and device events. And if you look down here, these are my functions. So in my app states, let me go to this real quick. So now I have several different states. I have my scan state, which is the total, a combination of the scan UI, and then my events here. And then here, I define my events. What was happening is in my composables, I was passing so many events that the parameter list was getting huge and it was getting very messy and I wanted to find a way to consolidate and clean that up a bit. To solve that, I created separate data classes and I grouped different events together. So here's my read write commands on read, on write, and then descriptor on read and on write. And then I have different device events here that are triggered. And then just for convenience, I have a constant val that basically sets up my scan UI as an empty state. And then here, back in my view model, I set this empty state when it's initialized. And otherwise, I go ahead and I create my state here with these functions in the view model. So is editing, and then it calls the on is editing from my view model. This way really consolidates everything nicely and it makes the previews easier to use and it also makes testing a little bit easier because I can just pass empty states around if I need to. To demonstrate how this works, I'll show you my app bar composable. So let's go ahead and go into that. And as you can see, I'm passing in my app layout info, which is portrait or landscape, my scan UI, and then here I have my device events and my BLE connect events. Now with these grouped together, I can easily, when I want to pass these along, I can easily call my view model functions like this without having, you know, 13 or 14 parameters passed to each composable. So it really cleans things up and makes things nice. Testing my BLE app on different devices proved to be very difficult because the Android Studio emulators do not support Bluetooth capabilities. That means I had to rely on my previews more than ever to test different configurations. So in my presentation layer, I created a new package called Preview Params. And here I set up a couple of constants. So I'm using my app layout info, and this one's portrait, portrait narrow, landscape, and landscape big. And then I also create some default devices, device details, and device lists. And then using these values, I inherit from the preview parameter provider. And I create a couple of different sequences. So this is for the home page, and this is everything. This is the app, top app bar, the details, and the list of devices. And what I wanted to do was have a couple different configurations. So here in my scan UI, I pass in a list of devices. But now in the second one, I provide an empty list and provide the device detail instead. So what that means is for this one, a device would actually be selected. 
And then I do the same for portrait narrow, landscape layouts, and finally landscape big. And what this allowed me to do was create a bunch of previews for my different layouts and my different themes, like light and dark theme. And let me show you what that looks like here. So I've got my portrait light. And then here's when a device is actually selected. And then here's that narrow tablet with a little bit of padding on the sides. And then again, here's a device selected. So it's looping through all these preview parameters to give me different previews. And then here's landscape mode in dark theme. And then here's a selected device. And again, here's the narrow tablet. And then finally, here's landscape big. So this was really helpful and I'll show you the code for this real quick. Even with the preview parameters, I still had to create a couple of different functions, but I was still able to easily get what I was trying to achieve. So here in the home layout preview, I pass in my preview parameter and my portrait layout params, and then it's going to loop through each one for portrait. And then here I set up my narrow layout. And finally, landscape big. So by doing that, it really made things a lot easier and I was able to be more confident with my testing without having to have a billion devices that I could test on for physical devices. To test my app on multiple devices, I also created some Android tests. And to make this work, I had to add a couple things. For starters, I wanted them to run under JUnit 5 Compose testing. And I also needed to make a ton of changes to Coin because I cannot rely on the Bluetooth adapter in this environment. So everything needs to be mocked. I need to have my device lists mocked and my device details mocked. And for starters, I'm here in my settings.gradle file and I add the snapshot for JUnit 5 Compose testing. So you can add this Maven URL here. And then in my build.gradle file, I add the JUnit 5 plugin, add the test runner. And this is really important. The Compose snapshot is compiled against JVM target 11. So for compile options, make sure to upgrade to version 11. And for Kotlin options, set it to 11. And then finally down here, let's see where it is for testing. We wanna see the snapshot, here it is. So we add the snapshot here. And now that that's all set up, uh, let me go to my coin. Now I have a coin test module set up, but I, for this end-to-end -end test, I wanted to override everything and make sure that every single component was mocked where it needed to be. So I created this end-to-end -end module and I get my context. I mock the Bluetooth adapter. I mock the Bluetooth scanner. And then I set up my dispatchers. Uh, I set up my repository is mocked in this case because um, I run repository tests in other unit tests and I didn't need to worry about this for my end-to-end -end test. So again, I'm mocking my BLE manager and I'm also mocking my GAP. And then I have my view model here and then I just mock my use cases. Now in my actual end-to-end -end test, I create Android Compose extension and pass in my main activity. And then I get everything that I need to mock my repository, I set up a flow here, which is a flow of delay device list, and I'll show you this. So this is just a hard-coded device list. And then back in my test. Before each, I load the coin modules, and here I'm loading my end-to-end -end module, which will override my test app modules. And then for the setup, I basically set everything up for every user message, return the state flow. So I just set up everything that I need to mock in my actual test. And if it's favorites, if I'm filtering by favorites, then go ahead and filter by favorite. And then these are my actual tests. So again, here I have another for get scan device as null, returns my flow. And then I call my extension from my compose test. And I check to make sure that last scene, I have a count of three. And then 
because I wanted to really test on multiple devices, this is where the magic happens. So I can change, let's say, to a Pixel C, which is a rather large tablet, and I can go ahead and see what that's going to look like in my test. And here I capture a screenshot to the actual device. I'll go ahead and run this and show you what it looks like. Great, so it ran and we could see it on the screen. Now let's go to Device Explorer and look for this screenshot. So I go into Data, Data, and I find my package, which is all the way down here. And I go to Files. Now I'm looking for Home Scanless Unfiltered. So what do we have here? Home Scanless Unfiltered. And let's look for the newest one. And I can double click on that. And here we go. So I've got my screenshot of what it looks like on a Pixel C. And this is so cool because I can basically test on whatever device I want to now and make sure that everything looks okay in the different layout modes. I also wanted to have really thorough coverage on my scan view model. So here it is if you'd like to check it out. It's an Android test presentation scan and scan view model test. And it basically mocks all of the Bluetooth adapter, the LE scanner, it mocks my Bluetooth GAT. So I set everything up here. And then I set everything up for what I want to return for each function. And then let's go. So I test every method and every function, basically. So I test the start scan. I test all of my flows. I make sure the filters are working the way they should be. On filter here. And I'm using Turbine to test my scan state. So here I call scanViewModel.ScanState.Test. And I wait for my items to come through the flow. And on favorites, so these are all of the tests. And I'll go ahead and run it and show you what it looks like real quick. Let's run this. I'll go ahead and pop this out so it's bigger. And here we go, these are all of my tests. And it's great, everything comes out green, and I know that my view model is working well. Now, because I've mocked everything, including my repository, as I mentioned before, I also have many repository tests, which are located in my data local package. So here I have my repository test, and this uses an in-memory room database and this way I can check and make sure my DAO is working as it should be too. So as long as these tests pass, I can be confident mocking my repository and my view model testing. So here this goes through and it actually tests against the database to make sure I can get my company IDs, my service IDs. And then I also went through and tested the insert and tested the various functionality here. As you can see, this is a larger test because there's a lot more to verify. Delete the scans. I can also test my scan filters. So I can test and make sure that when I call my repository and I filter by name, that the DAO actually returns the correct order of everything that I need and sorted by name. And I can also test my RSSI I'm pretty happy with my test coverage at this point. I'm covering my DAO, my repositories, and my view model. It's not complete, so I'll consider this as a continuing work in progress. And that's it for today. Feel free to check out all of my new changes out on GitHub. Thanks for watching.